Okay, cut the top out. You can still see there's quite a bit of dye from the mulch company. But I think it's going to turn out well. I'm going to scrub the walls. Get the rest of it. I'm going to scoop that out with a uh, shovel. Just because uh, using water to thin it out just takes a long time. So I feel like if I scoop it up, get all this done in a couple minutes, get some Dawn, get my scrubber, start working on the sides here. Probably take me an hour to do that. Uh, get it nice and clean and then uh, do some more testing. This worked out. This turned out pretty good. I cut the hatch out and uh, Yeah, pretty happy with it so far got it out of the back of my truck. This thing's not that heavy. I mean, it's probably uh, uh, I don't know 75 pounds It's, it's really not too bad. It's just awkward, but um, Yeah, I just dropped it out of the back of the truck laid it on its side And everything looks good. So what I may do also is I may lay this on the side um yeah i got a pallet jack i've had that though um i may lay it on its side that's so i can scrub down instead of getting inside uh i don't know we'll see we'll see how how uh it may be easier to just put it on its side and kind of reach in sideways and maybe scrub the scrub the sides whatever side's down so we'll see but it looks good and then here's my hatch Here's the hatch I built, just a test, and um, there's a piece, what is it, double, I think it's double paned, or I don't even know what you call it, double walled, double walled uh, cardboard there. I'm just gonna test it, I'm gonna get inside here later, and I'm gonna use tape. I'm actually gonna tape it while I'm in there, and uh, I'm gonna have one of my friends turn the thing on and see if this will, I think it'll work. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll, it'll hold. I'm curious to see how how much that cardboard will hold on the pressure. Maybe a good way to go because uh, if anything would happen, you know, you can probably t maybe take a knife in with you. <laughs> if you can't get out. I'm sure you can break the cardboard though. And then if uh, too much pressure, just cut the cut it with a knife. And uh, then you can get out because I don't have any pressure release valves yet. I was thinking about just uh, drilling a hole. I have cork. I have a piece of cork inside from like a um, uh, wine bottle. I was gonna just drill a hole, shove the cork in there, and then jump inside and see how the pressure how the pressure feels. So far, so good though. to be continued. So scooped out in two minutes here. I'll show you how I'm doing this. It's Stuff is stains pretty well, but it washes off a little well too. stuff kind of reminds me of maybe like what oil looks like when it comes out of the ground I don't know it's it's, it's uh it's just dye a little bit of water to it and so I went over to that Ohio mulch here in Columbus Ohio 
and it was their corporate, or not maybe, yeah, it was their corporate office where they do most of their uh, grinding of stumps and uh, people are dropping stuff off, picking stuff up. Wow, you're talking about, it's like the wild, wild west. Semis, forklifts, bulldozers, uh, bulldozers, but there's uh, four wheeled, uh, be bucket trucks or buckets. They were everywhere. It was wild. Got my truck all dirty going back there because uh, it rained over the last couple of days. It was just a muddy, muddy mess. But it was interesting to see. I never, uh, I just drove back there because the guy I talked to said, Yeah, come to the back. We're back here with all these uh, totes and you just pick one up. And I got confused and I got lost back there and I had to ask a couple people where to even go because it was, it was huge. It was probably 20 acres. 20 acres is just tree stumps, grinders, uh, you know, they were uh, grinding up the trees to make mulch. So they are actually bagging it there also. It's actually working pretty well, this uh, piece of cardboard. This is working perfect. It's a little squeegee. So uh, yeah, 30 bucks. I was looking online the night before I, I looked on Craigslist. You can get a new one for around 300. <coughs> uh, obviously, benefits of that is you know to do this crap. Um, but for me to test and kind of experiment with, about 30 bucks was pretty reasonable. And. <laughs> So I was driving around with this in the back of my truck and uh, I had to go over to Walmart, get some chin-up bars for one of the other products I make. And I use the chin-up bars to sell my product. I'm driving through the parking lot and pull out and on the road, sitting on a red light. Some guy comes up to my window in his truck and he's like, hey man, you want to sell that thing to me? He's like, I've been looking for one of those. And me, I should should have said, yeah, how much you want to pay for it? So I know how much I got invested in it. Not very much. And uh, he's like, man, I've been looking for one of those. I have a, uh, I do asphalt ceiling. I've been looking for one to take on this job site. So uh, me being a nice guy, I just told him where to get it and how much I paid for it. But I think I could have got it. I mean, I think I could have got a hundred bucks out of it, but whatever, that, was, that wasn't my plan. So maybe a good idea if you guys want to make some money out there, I don't know. If you got a truck, pick up one of these and just drive around with a for sale sign on. And I'm thinking for sale sign and then, uh, you know, since you already got it in the truck, you can deliver. That's where you'd make your money because most people don't have, well, a lot of people don't have trucks. But they want the they want to use these for rain barrels or um, I don't know store anything. That guy was he was willing to buy right out of the back of my truck. I didn't ask him how much, but I think I could have got a hundred bucks out of them easily. And this is a bigger one. There's a 275 gallon one, 275 gallon. And there's a 300 gallon or 330. And this is a 330. I'm a big guy, so I'm six foot six, so I want something a little bit taller. And uh, that's why we chose this. It looks pretty good though. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse it out. This has been pretty clean. I mean, after, after I stood it up, brought it over here, I've been rinsing it out for about 15 minutes. So that's the first time I've seen the bottom clean like that. Like I said, about 15 minutes after I scooped all of it out, this is what we got. A little remnants. I'm not so 
not sure that's dye anymore. I think that's like, I don't know. I don't think that's dye. And maybe just some dirt. Um, I'm not real sure, but you can see how clear the water is. And um, that stuff's just, I'm not sure what it is. But yeah, looks good. We're gonna get jump inside here, scrub it down. And uh, hopefully it won't take too much elbow grease and we can get uh, the walls to look like this floor. So a little bit of Dawn water and elbow grease. And this, this brush. He's a little bit cleaner. Try from this way. I'll stand up on a ladder. Don't use a ladder. Just lay the container on its side. Try and flush all the rest of this down. Should probably get the rooftop first, but. Clean water to me. <laughs> wow. That is some brown water. Ooh. Still brown. And this stuff is just crazy, crazy coloring. It's definitely looking better. Comet. This is what I started using. Comet, now using a Brillo pad. Seems to be working pretty good. Yeah. Cool. Making a little dirty. It's a dirty job. Look at the water. It's looking better. Still got some work. But the water looks good. Looking brighter and much more clean. So, yeah. I don't know how much longer, but if you hear the tower and airplanes, because I, I listen to live ATC while I work, it's always. Uh, to me, it's entertaining. So, uh, yeah, almost there. Yeah. So I switched over to Borax. I ran out of Comet. So. 
didn't think it was going to work as well. I use borax to wash my hands inside of a powder soap dispenser. Love it. So I ran a Comet, trying borax. It's pretty good. Tell you what though. <laughs> When I was using Comet, I didn't really notice the fumes while you're in here. Because I guess Comet's just a powder bleach. This borax, wow, burns your nose. So I use a little less. Seems to be a little better. But pretty impressed with it. It's supposed to be a natural cleaner. So I'm all about natural. And uh, I want to be as safe as possible with any fumes in here or uh, so pretty impressed with borax it's got an abrasive texture to it so works pretty well and you can see it's clean up I think you guys can see it can't you Much. I'm just leaning on it a little bit and it's coming undone. Coming, or coming clean. So I think this cleaning method is best. Maybe get these brushes for the heavy stuff first and then come back and get it with a scorch pad. Or Brillo pad or whatever you want to call it. This is going to break though. It's hot. I'm sweating. 10, it's 10.15 10, in the morning. It started at about 7.30. So I've got a good, man, probably three hours of you know, trying different things. and This seems to be working pretty good. this and rotate that to the bottom just easier to push down instead of pushing to the side wear yourself out real quick pushing to the side so just want to give you show you what it look like in here looks pretty good lots of light coming in makes me real nice So that's the end of the uh, cleaning part. I'll probably spend another half hour there just finalizing, making sure that most of the uh, dye was gone. But uh, all in all, I think it took about three hours, maybe three and a half hours to get that thing clean. And uh, again, it's not perfectly clean, but it's, uh, it's good enough for the next step, which is uh, me jumping inside and testing it. So check out part three.